now it's time to talk about something that's actually important, which is chain restaurants. You know, most people, when you're deciding where to eat, it's like a contest of who knows the most authentic hole in the wall, mom and pop spot. Like, oh, let's go to that new place downtown. The name of the restaurant is always the name of one ingredient followed by a period, like cilantro period, or like basil period. And then it's uh, always like scratch kitchen and bar, like cilantro kitchen and bar, basil kitchen and bar. And if you look on Yelp, the genre is American parentheses new. My wife jokes about this. She's like, hey, let's go to that new American parentheses new place. Or they'll tell you all about how this, it's this really authentic hole in the wall taco truck on the other side of town. And oh, you gotta go. They're from Oaxaca. It's great. There's this, they've got this sauce that you can't get anywhere else, rah, rah, rah. Well, no, not me. I don't want to go to that authentic mom and pop place. You know where I want to go? I want to go to a fucking chain restaurant. Why would I take a chance on something new that I might not like when I could go somewhere where I know it's going to be exactly the same, whether I go in San Diego, Buffalo, or Orlando, I know it's going to taste exactly the same because it's probably fucking frozen and they got it off the back of a truck and all they do is heat it up. <laughs> Why would I want to go to some hipster authentic place when I could go to a chain restaurant? So today, we will answer the question of which chain restaurants are the best, which ones just okay, and which ones are F tier. We'll answer that question today. Very important. And also, I'd like to thank Keeps for sponsoring this video. Keeps is a subscription service that helps men keep their hair. It may be too late for me, but it doesn't have to be too late for you. The reality is that two thirds of guys experience hair loss by the age of 35. That is about when it started for me. And Keeps offers clinically proven, researched back treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth delivered straight to your door. With Keeps, you don't have to go to a doctor, but you're still getting a doctor recommended plan at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. But you'll still have 24 seven care and support. Every plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging where you can connect with your prescribing doctor about anything, anytime. So whether you wanna prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of your hair, Keeps is for you. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get a special offer on Keeps treatments, go to keeps.com slash fin or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash fin. And thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Now, got to make sure we just definitionally understand this is different from fast food. These are places where you sit down to eat and they bring your food to you. To me, that's the difference between like a restaurant, like a fast casual restaurant and fast food. So we already talked about fast food. We're only talking about actual restaurants for this one. Let's start with something familiar. How about everyone's favorite? Like I think of just the prototypical chain restaurant is Olive Garden. We all know Olive Garden, right? Olive Garden Italian Kitchen. Or as I like to say, I Italian. That's what you gotta say. I like the old Olive Garden logo better. I love I Italian food. Now here's the thing. Olive Garden food is almost all terrible. Like, just trash for the most part. Like, look at this fucking lasagna. Like, it's even in like an aluminum tray it's fucking lean cuisine that's all it is olive garden food is just lean cuisine i mean look at this disgusting whatever this is some sort of zoodles with what is it primavera something or other disgusting it's awful for the most part like what is this this is some sort of shrimp scampi with this gross fettuccine alfredo pasta or something like that but you know what's not gross is the salad and the breadsticks in the soup, the salad, their famous house salad. Look at this copycat Olive Garden salad. I got to make that shit because I could eat this all fucking day long. Our famous house salad where here it is. Look at this. Mmm. Does not get any better than this. The best part of it is the dressing. Those peppers, the pickled peppers with the dressing. Absolutely incredible. S tier salad. And of course, the other thing about Olive Garden is the breadsticks just absolutely incredible i gotta say though the last few times i've been there which is not very often i was a little let down because they didn't have enough seasoning on them what you really want is one of those breadsticks that has so much seasoning on it that um it, it almost like sears your tongue with how salty it is because well for one one trick is you got to turn it over upside down 
So like, if this is the seasoning side of the breadstick, you gotta do it that way so that the seasoning hits your tongue. Otherwise you're wasting it. Yeah, caked in it, exactly. There's gotta be so much seasoning on there that it almost burns your tongue. The breadsticks and the salad, those two things are just fucking, for all of you atheists watching, we know that there is a God because without a God, who could have possibly created Olive Garden breadsticks and salad? So 99% of their menu is absolute shit, but the Olive Garden breadsticks and salad alone are enough to put it on the S tier. Simple as that, my friends. Oh, and also, I forgot about this. The Andes Mint that you get after dinner. Uh, it used to be Andes. Now I think they're just like branded as Olive Garden, right? The little Olive Garden, the, the mint you get afterwards. Incredible. Incredible. I'm not an atheist anymore, thanks to Finn. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad we could have this moment together. What's next? Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay, I used to go to Buffalo Wild Wings a lot when it was called BW3 to uh, watch UFCs back before UFC wasn't as popular because, you know, I was cheap. I didn't want to pay 50 bucks for UFC. They were 50 bucks back then. So I would go there with my friend Brian, watch UFC. Can't do that anymore. Too too crowded now. Yeah, the F tier service. And for one, you got to wait like a fucking hour for a table. Service is awful. Yes. And like terrible service. The food, you know, I'm not into wings personally. I don't like the wings very much, but I do like the nachos quite a bit. The nachos with chicken. Pretty damn good. I got served slimy chicken from there and the manager told me to request them to be cooked an extra two minutes next time. How about you just cook them the amount that they're supposed to be cooked? Never been to a Buffalo Wild Wings before. Am I missing out? Well, I'm not that into wings, so I don't know. They have like pizza. It's okay. And they've got other stuff. The nachos are pretty good. Uh, but for me, the service is horrible. I don't want to wait a fucking hour for a table at any chain restaurant. That's just unacceptable to me. But it's not horrible, so I'd put it on the C tier. How about the Cheesecake Factory? What do we all think of Cheesecake Factory? Do you guys know the one in Anaheim by the Anaheim Convention Center? It's like, uh, I don't know, a mile or so from there. I went to that one with Todd Jones about 10 years ago, <laughs> and I still have a picture of me and Todd at the Cheesecake Factory together. Todd Jones from Nails, which I feel like is, um, I feel like that's pretty metal. You know, going to Cheesecake Factory with Todd Jones. Highlight of my life. Shout out to Todd Jones. Anyhow, Cheesecake Factory. I really want to like Cheesecake Factory because the whole reason that I like chain restaurants is because I grew up pretty poor. We never, ever went out to eat. And if we did go out to eat, you know, you couldn't get a drink or an appetizer or anything like that. We always lived in small, crappy towns where they didn't have any sort of like normal middle class stuff. That's all I've ever wanted in my life. I've always just craved kind of a normal middle-class existence because that seemed unattainable when I was a kid. Like, seriously, my wife says the same thing. She grew up the same way that I did on welfare and stuff. I always just craved a normal middle-class existence. And what is more middle-class than Costco and Cheesecake Factory? There's nothing more middle-class than Cheesecake Factory. I've tried really hard to like Cheesecake Factory for that reason. The problem is that it's not that good, especially when you consider the cost. Now, the first thing to think about is the menu. Like, the fucking menu legit has, like, hundreds of things on it. I mean, look at just the appetizers. There's, like, 20 different appetizers, and then, like, 20 small plates and snacks, fish, seafood, and steaks, 20 things there. I mean, the menu is monstrous. They bring it out to you in this book. Look how many things are on every page, and there's probably 20 pages in the menu. There's hundreds of things on this menu. How do they do it? I don't know. And all of it is kind of bad. Look at this stuff. Like, whatever this, like, shrimp and pasta is, you know, this really half-assed, like, breaded chicken on the spaghetti. I mean, it's so mid. I really want to like it. And it's also expensive as fuck. Like, my wife and I went to Cheesecake Factory. Last time we went was in 2020, I think. We got, like drinks and like an entree each and it was like with a tip it was like 70 dollars to eat a fucking cheesecake factory ridiculous now their bread is incredible i will say that the bread is just ridiculous but you can get that stuff at the supermarket so for that reason alone as much as i want to like cheesecake factory for the bread i'll put it on the b tier 
but god damn it it's expensive 70 dollars to go to fucking cheesecake i don't think so of course i love bread how could i not love bread my wife ordered pasta at cheesecake factory and there's a piece of plastic wrap still on the meat on her pasta <laughs> two out of ten because the bread was still good exactly the bread saves everything What's next? Red Lobster. Yes. Good point. The Red Lobster Biscuits. Okay. Red Lobster, uh, owned by the same people as Olive Garden, Darden Restaurants. Um, not good. I feel like all of these things sort of have the same issue, which is the food kind of tastes like lean cuisine because most of it is probably frozen, comes off a truck. I guess it's okay, but it's expensive too. You know, you go there, this is going to be like 40 bucks or something for one person to get this like crappy frozen lobster with a couple sides, these like gross, like frozen shrimp. It's going to cost you like 40 or 50 bucks. But the biscuits, absolutely fucking incredible. Have you ever had these fucking biscuits? The fucking biscuits holy shit these biscuits are fucking incredible like i want to starve myself for like two weeks and just go and eat a fucking laundry basket full of these goddamn biscuits because they're absolutely fucking incredible i just want to go there and just get biscuits no we're good we don't need an entree just the biscuits i feel like a lot of these is sort of the same thing where if they had to be ranked purely on the merits of their food they would be f tier but because there's like one thing that's incredible yeah, they get a little bit higher but uh, i don't really like lobster and like i don't like shrimp those are like sea bugs to me so i'm gonna put red lobster on the c tier how about red robin do you guys all have red robin where you live it started in seattle but i guess that they i guess they exist in other places now Red Robin is like, you know, sort of generic, it's, you know, gourmet burgers. My wife loves Red Robin, especially the campfire sauce. I, I gotta say, I'm not as in love with Red Robin as she is, but I do like it, um, mostly because it's so, it's familiar to me. You know, it's from the Seattle area. I mean, look at this. Julia tries everything. She went to Red Robin. She got her... Uh, I'm sure all their profit centers, these like $12, like awful mixed drinks, gourmet burgers and brews. Uh, I think the burger is excellent, but it's not incredible. The fries, I really don't care for the fries. I don't like these thick cut steak fries. I prefer more of a thin, crispier fry. But still, I do like Red Robin overall. My wife is always happy to go there. And you guys, those of you who are married know how difficult it is. Here's the old school Red Robin logo. I'm going to use that one. Those of you who are married know how hard it is to find food that your wife likes, you know, because they always say, where do you want to go? And you're like, wherever you want to go. They're like, oh, God. Okay, how about here? No, not that. All right. Well, how about this? No, not that. My wife is like this, too. I'm like, well, how about Red Robin? She's like, okay, that sounds good. So I'm going to put Red Robin on the A tier simply because I know that my wife will go there anytime. If she wants to eat something and she's making me pick, I know that she's always going to say yes to Red Robin. Okay. Uh, Denny's. Gotta say, I know everyone wants to love Denny's because of the, uh, what the fuck is up Denny's meme. You know, I feel like Denny's got a lot of mileage off of that one recently. And I get it. You know, I went to Denny's a lot after shows when I was, you know, a teen because it's like the only thing that was open late after a show. But man, it is terrible. Denny's is absolute garbage. This is what Denny's food actually looks like. Some horrible, like, gross, limp piece of bacon with flavorless hash browns, two, like, overly done eggs, some orange juice from concentrate that's probably warm, flavorless pancakes with a huge fucking pile of butter on them. Ugh. I might rather, like, not even eat at all then go to Denny's. It is awful. I don't understand how anybody could possibly think that Denny's is good. It's vile. Like, it's not just bad. It's vile. It goes on the F tier. That's what I think. Applebee's. Gotta talk about Applebee's. Like, maybe the definitive. After Olive Garden, Applebee's might be the definitive chain restaurant, right? Again, I really want to like Applebee's because what is a more sort of normie thing to do than go to Applebee's? Nothing says normie pleb more than applebee's it's like the least interesting food of all time there's nothing about it that's remarkable in any way you know they have just 
the most boring ass shit like what's the the bourbon steak or whatever you guys know all i ever wanted to be was a normie at that level just the most bland basic normie but i gotta say as much as i wanted to like applebee's as much as i've tried to like applebee's it's so bad if it was just mediocre i could overlook it I would say, I don't care, it's just mediocre, but I want to be a normie so bad that I'm going to pretend Applebee's is great, but it's really just terrible, and it's fucking expensive. You know, you go there, and you might, uh, you might drop 50 bucks for two people to go to fucking Applebee's, you know? Now, it's not as bad as Denny's. I'd rather go to Applebee's than Denny's, but it's pretty bad. IHOP. International House of Pancakes. Now I guess it's just called IHOP, right? I think IHOP might be even worse than Denny's. Um, it's really, 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 really bad. Maybe even worse than Denny's. And I feel like IHOP has kind of a crackhead vibe too. Like, I feel like whenever I see IHOP, there's always like, people are like screaming at the clouds and sores on their face from picking at the scabs because they're on meth. Like, I just feel like IHOP has kind of a methy vibe to it. So uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to put that on the F tier with Denny's. Food is terrible. Reminds me of crackheads. Can't do it. Yeah, the sticky syrups next to the table. Ugh. Now, how about California Pizza Kitchen? CPK. What do you guys think about CPK? I'll tell you about my experience with it. There is one in, at least used to be, in this mall. Do you guys know this this mall on Hollywood Boulevard right by the Chinese Theater? There's like a Hot Topic over here too, or at least used to be. I went to this one about 10 years ago when I was on a work trip and I saw Jeannie Mai there, who you might know from being on The View, possibly the most famous Vietnamese woman in America right now, I think, maybe. She used to have a show called How Do I Look? And they were shooting it like in this courtyard here. And then I went to CPK and paid a bunch of money for a mediocre pizza that uh, tasted like it came out of a box. Because it probably did. You, know, you can get these, like, like this is from Walmart. I feel like the food at CPK, they probably just take these out of the box and heat it up. It's not great. I think I would still rather go to CPK, even though it's kind of mediocre. I would still rather go there than Denny's or IHOP or Applebee's. Probably even over Red Lobster. So, I mean, it's still pizza. So, I'll put it on the B tier. Golden Corral. How about that? I don't think they have these in Washington. I feel like they only have these like in the Midwest. I used to call it the Glutton Corral because basically it's this. You see how like nasty this is? Like it's like a buffet type thing. I mean like look at this like tray of goop. It's basically like, you know, school lunch. Um, only, <laughs> uh, you know, you pay for it. <laughs> I mean, look at this shit. It's, it's so gross. I feel like the only people who are into uh, into Golden Corral are like old white people from like Missouri. That's what I think of. A lot of bang for your buck. That's true. I went there a couple times when I lived in Cincinnati because I worked with this uh, Filipino guy who loved it. And you look at this, you know, this is the kind of thing that Filipinos like. Meatloaf, macaroni and cheese, fried chicken, mashed potatoes. Filipinos and Islanders, they'll eat the shit out of that stuff. So I understand why he liked it. But me, I never had a taste for this sort of like gross American food. Been to Golden Corral in Missouri a number of times and it's a pretty sad place. Yeah, and I feel like you're guaranteed to get diarrhea from it. I would not ever choose to eat there unless, you know, I was like, I don't know, starving to death or something like that. Then maybe I would do it. But uh, for me, Golden Corral, uh, gosh... Between D and F tier, it's tough. What do you guys think? D or F? At least I feel like Golden Corral, I could find something I like. Unlike Denny's and IHOP, where it's just utter fucking garbage. Ugh. Someone mentioned Chinese. Okay, so we got to talk about P.F. Chang's. Now, you might think that I would like P.F. Chang's because it is very normie and mainstream. And you know that all I ever wanted out of life was to be a normie, mainstream, middle-class person. But the problem is... The P.F. Chang's is a combination of two awful things. Number one is this sort of gross, reheated, out-of-a-box, lean cuisine chain restaurant food, which is gross, and also Chinese food, which is also gross. I hate Chinese food, and before anybody tells me I don't know anything about real Chinese food, I've been to China five times, motherfuckers. My father-in-law is half Chinese. I just went to dim sum yesterday. I know all about Chinese food. It's disgusting. P.F. Chang's is somehow even worse than real Chinese food, though. Real Chinese food is bad. 
P.F. Chang's is somehow even worse. Absolutely disgusting. Exactly. I'm such an LFO stand that Chinese food makes me sick. Exactly. Too many good hole-in-the-wall Chinese food places in Jersey growing up. I've never had P.F. Chang's. Well, you're not missing anything uh, because real Chinese food is bad. P.F. Chang's is even worse. Panda Express is way better. I agree. Panda Express is okay. P.F. Chang's is fucking vile. I would never, ever, ever choose to go to P.F. Chang's. Disgusting. Oh, Panera. Gotta talk about Panera. Look how welcoming this is. Look at this. This right here, the welcoming glow of a Panera. Did you ever want to be anything more than the kind of middle-class suburban mom that goes to Panera because she likes the hazelnut coffee? I hope not. That's right. The cinnamon crunch bagel is incredible. It's like 800 calories, which is amazing that they can fit that many calories into the bagel, but it's great. The baguettes are also incredible, and the chips... Let's talk about the chips. I don't know how they do it, but these chips, just these basic Panera chips are absolutely incredible. I love the hazelnut coffee too. Um, I love Panera. The problem is lately it's gotten kind of expensive. You get a fucking sandwich and, you know, chips and a drink now. And I want to say it's like 15 bucks. All these places were like go-tos in college and we wanted to eat cheap and feel like adults. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's like, I'm not going to pay $15 to eat at Panera. You know what I mean? A mediocre sandwich, as much as I enjoy the norminess of it, 15 bucks is a bit steep. So it's a little bit expensive for what it is, but I am a fan. So where does it belong? I'm going to go with, uh, I'll put it on the A tier with Red Robin. My wife also likes Panera, so bonus points for that. They didn't get things there that are relatively healthy. So I, I feel pretty good about putting Panera on the A tier. So yes, let's talk about Bahama Breeze. I feel like it's really going to encapsulate a lot of things here. If the promise of Olive Garden is that when you sit down there, you feel like you're at a posh but rustic outdoor bistro in Tuscany, looking out at the beautiful golden hills as the a gentle breeze uh, swishes across you, the chef prepares your rustic pizza if that's the promise of olive garden the bahama breeze is that but for the caribbean right it's like the essence of the jimmy buffett lifestyle of course well margaritaville would be the most jimmy buffett restaurant but bahama breeze is close i went there once i think i got something like this the coconut shrimp tacos the food is mid of course nothing incredible mid at best i would say but still there's not many things that i want more then as I get older, to be like a chill Jimmy Buffett boomer, you know, that just doesn't want to do anything but go to shitty chain restaurants like Bahama Breeze and pay too much money for mediocre food. It's all I really ever wanted out of life is to be that kind of like chill upper middle class boomer. What more could anyone want out of life for that? So would I rank their food highly? I would say no. But as far as how it makes me feel... I'll put it, uh, you know what, fuck it. I'll put it on the A tier because it makes me feel like I can be that chill Jimmy Buffett boomer someday as I grow older. So that's where I put Bahama Breeze. And that does it for the chain restaurant tier list. Shout out to my people. Shout out to the middle class suburban normies. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't live your dreams because you can if your dreams are to go to Applebee's and Olive Garden once in a while with your wife. Live your dreams, my friends.